So if you have finished the spline exercises without any problem, you can probably skip this video uh, because here we'll just go pre briefly over the workflow of using the different spline generators with the, the other uh, reference images. So uh, the first kind of thing we like to do is this kind of nut uh, or whatever this kind of shape is. And we want to think about what kind of generator can we use to make a 3D shape out of this. Um, and for this, we can just use the simple extrude generator. That would be this one. And we just want to draw this kind of shape uh, in this kind of reference mode up here. So in this kind of scenario where you want to use the extrude and we want this to be something like a nut, uh, we just drop it on the top view and then let's get rid of the work plane thing. It's uh, quite centered already. Uh, use shift V to go to the viewport settings uh, and just center it a little bit more perfectly. Now this shape is pretty simple. We can basically, uh, it should be able to use the end-sided uh, spline and then, yeah, we can use that. So as you can see, it's a little bit off center, but this end side is in the dead center because it's placed on the default position. So let's head back maybe just to the, um, to our reference image settings and let's, yeah, move it a little bit around until it's kind of nice and center. So maybe I didn't do a good job on centering this in the um, setup part. Anyhow, so as you can see, the first end sided thing we added and let me reduce the transparency or increase the transparency a little bit. Um, as you can see, that's perfectly f fitted to the outside of our shape. And let's do a duplicate of this one. And for the inner part, we need more uh, corners. So do we need less corners? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, six sides. Um, so this is just rotated basically. So we just need to decrease the size and then rotate it by 90 degree and then go even smaller with this one. And as you can see, it's simple as that. And let me ch check something here. So usually in, at least in the older versions of Cinema 3D, you could just drop both of those inside. Then the extrude should work. But yeah, as I remember correctly, that didn't uh, or doesn't work anymore uh, as easy as this. So two things we can do. The first thing we can do or should be able to do is use the connect object. Um, and maybe when we connect those two splines together, this will work. Ah, oh, yeah, as you can see, uh, this works. So with the connect object basically just merges those two objects together and therefore the uh, the extrude works. Uh, let me try something else. I want to see if this also works if we just group those two splines together. No, that doesn't work. Okay, so you have to stick with the connect object. Um, but another thing you can do and which is a little bit more powerful is to use the spline mask. And you find this under the generators uh, as well as the other ones. And this is a kind of another kind of generator to generate new splines. And what they can do is they can build a union. Um, in this case, it, it also works as a union, but you can also say a substrict B. Um, so that would be, I don't know whether this doesn't work. Okay, apparently it's not the thing. Ah, we have to change the axis. So X, Z axis, it's what we like to do the subtraction on. Um, and yeah, you can do other things like, like intersections. So, uh, yeah, we could do something like this or maybe something like this. Um, yeah, you have to pay attention on the, on the kind of axis you're, you're working with. So you have to play around a little bit. Um, but yeah, the, the usual behavior would be, um, to use in the subtract method. Um, over here and why is it not working anymore? Because we changed the plane again. So that's what you can do with the extrude. And then we can go to the caps, for example, and uh, throw in something like a bevel on the 
those segments. And what we can also do is you can see our corner edges are very sharp. Um, so if we go to our outside shape, the A shape, and add a little bit of rounding, you can see we can actually make this thing a little bit more rounded and therefore a little bit more nice looking. Maybe don't go as much or as high as with as I did here with the rounding, something like this, and then you get a nice shape with a nice edge beveling going around. We can also do the rounding, of course, here on the inside shape. Um, as you can see, it's a very parametric way to change in design the objects. So that would be a good way to use the reference image of a nut to build a 3D version of it. Okay, let me keep that here. And then we have the the rail object. So this one, oh, sorry, I have to move that back here. This one um, is the profile or the cross section of a rail, like a railroad rail. And we can use the um, sweep generator to kind of create something like a rail for us. So first of all, let's draw that kind of shape. So let's drop that into the front view here and scale it up. Let's get rid of the work plane to have a more precise view on our reference image. And let's move this to the center here a little bit. Um, so this might be a little bit oversized for a rail now, but we can um, work with this for now. And then let's head over to the spline pen tool and let's start drawing this kind of shape. Now, I want to try to um, do this quite roughly. And I like to actually uh, in activate something which is called snapping. And with snapping, we will be able to snap things to different kind of things. So let's activate the guides for here. Let's activate intersections. Let's activate splines. You have to do quite a different setup here, but with this, you kind of get this snapping. So I can make this point perfectly parallel perpendicular to the other point. So let's drop this here and let's drop this here. I like to do this very rough uh, because I like to later on use the chamfer tool to chamfer those corners and therefore get the shape. So I don't care about the actual rounding of those kind of edges for now. And then let's go this way. And later on, I also like to mirror this thing. Um, okay, so first of all, select those two then go to chamfer and let's see if this will work out. No, it will not work out. So what we can do now, what do we do in this kind of scenario? So what I should have done probably is I should have added a point right here in the center of this kind of curve. So let me do this with the line cut. I just drag and drop this knife tool across my edge here and then go to the selection tool and move this around here and then let's try the chamfer again and this looks much nicer okay move this a little bit more to the outside and let's get rid of those other points for now and uh, we can do this with the uh, dissolve usually where is it um mm -hmm. yes, does it work now we can just remove it can just use the delete key to remove it and then go to those two outer points and say that this should be soft interpolated all right so yeah it's the snapping is still on okay let's go to the next point i think it might be very difficult for you to see the line sorry about that um but i'm sure you will figure this out when you do it by yourself. So what we do now is just using the chamfer tool to kind of chamfer our corners here. And therefore getting like the desired bending of those kind of corners. 
All right, something like this. Okay, now let's make sure those two points are dead center. First, I scale this to 0% on the x-axis and then I make sure both of those points are on the center. Let me turn off the snapping for now. Why is my... I think I've selected something else here. Okay, so zero that out, move it a little bit to the top so we have a little bit of bending here. And then this one should be also that center on the x-axis. Okay, now let me try the mirror tool. Um, we like to mirror on the Y and X plane, I think. Uh, so that's always kind of, have to admit a bit of a test for myself, um, which kind of axis to choose. So that looked a bit more promising. Okay, something like this. Okay, so now we have two points on the top and on the bottom, which we can join. So we go to right click and it's too far on the bottom, uh, join segment. And then why is it not merging together? We can just delete the other one. So basically this just make sure this is one spline. So again, join segments and then you can delete the other one. Maybe this one. No, it's still not working. So let's go here. Let's go there. And let's say join segments. That's not working. Close spline for us, please. Okay, there we go. We have to just say close spline. And there we go. And there we have the ba basic path outline of our rail. So with the rail selected, or you don't have to select it any, actually, we just, uh, let's do just an arc spline for now uh, to demonstrate this kind of thing. So we go on the X, Z direction, we can increase the radius by quite a bit. And we can actually scale down this thing a little bit further to make this work. Okay, so now we go to the sweep tool, drop in the form shape first, and then the spline shape second. And there you have it. You have something which looks like a railroad rail. All right, so that's how I would do the this kind of shape, a railroad. Let's hide this, and last but not least, we have the wing. The wing we go, the wing goes also here to the side view, and for the wing, depending on what kind of wing we like to build, we could either use the extrude again, or we can use because we haven't so far use the loft uh, shape to build this kind of thing. So let me quickly trace this shape. Um, let's start here on the corner. I will use just tangents for now to kind of mimic this kind of shape. And like this, maybe one point here in between, and then to the end of this. So that's quite fast. Now, what we can do now with the, lo with the loft tool is we can basically drop that in and then make a duplicate of that one, the first one, and go to object mode, drag that out, and therefore create this kind of wing. So what we see probably on the front there, no, actually, why is it, why is it like this? So let's check that out with the objects. Um, if we have to increase some of the subdivisions, ah, there we go. The mesh subdivisions U direction was a little bit low. And then we get this kind of nice wing shape. And now what you can do is we can, for example, rotate this kind of spline a little bit. So you kind of get this bending or we can scale this one down 
to get this kind of effect. Or we can make one spline in between and have even more kind of interesting effects or bending effects or whatever we like to achieve or maybe the wing should go up a little bit at some point. Okay, so this is how we use the loft tool to create this kind of organic formed wing part of an airplane, for example. Okay, so this should give you a quick intro or explanation on how to use the different spline tools and how to draw the splines from reference image. Um, yeah.